Hey, aloha, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. We're here for another episode of Security Matters Hawaii. And today we've got a uh, former Hawaii guy. He's moved on to a, another integration firm on the mainland. Uh, Rob Van Huss is with us. His title is Service Jedi. So we're talking to a guy who really knows the industry intricacies from a technology perspective in and out. Rob, thanks so much for joining us today, man. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Honored to be here. Ah, no worries. Good stuff. It's always good to get the former Hawaii guys back on. I had uh, Colin Fair on here recently. He's with Night Security now, and uh, I think he's in Austin, but good, good to see you. Looks like you're doing well, man, so I'm glad to have you on. Um, let's go, uh, for, for those of, of our viewers who may not know you, let's um, kind of give them some of your history, some of your background, as much as you sort of care to share. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I lived in Hawaii for... Uh, almost 12 years. Ah. It was from 19, 1997 to 2008. And uh, where I uh, was in the low voltage industry, got started off in, in fire alarms, working in uh, a lot. I was mostly in Waikiki, down in the hotels down there, working on the fire alarms. Wow. Uh, did that for about uh, four or five years. And then while I was, uh, in the fire alarm industry, I got a small taste of the security industry. Ah. A little bit of access control, a little bit of video, but just a very tiny bit. But every time I was able to uh, dabble in that, I liked it so much better than mm. fire alarms. It, it was just, it was so much more interesting. And um, I wound up, uh, you know, moving to a, another company that did primarily uh, access control and video. It didn't last very long. It was about four months. And then uh, and then I found you guys at Integrated Security Technologies. Awesome. And uh, and that was that was awesome. Um, that I so I was with you guys for three years. And that's when I got introduced to uh, Lindell and working with you and, and Christine. And that was a fantastic experience. Um, oh, so thank you. I, we let you I get away. Put a, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, you know, big shout out to you guys. Uh, you know, I always think of you like, like family. So, you know, awesome. and never forget where you came from. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good company. Yeah. So you got, I remember you got, um, you got married and you went, you went to Maine. So did you go, did you end up in California at first or were you, where'd you head to? I think Vegas, right? Yeah. So, um, we moved, we moved away from Hawaii in 2008. I, I had a newborn, I had a newborn daughter. Right. And, uh, so we were just, uh, looking for some more space. So we, we found a, uh, opportunity with Netronics integration in Las Vegas. Oh, and yeah. they were just starting uh, a new office over there. Uh, they had this big project with an Amazon warehouse. Okay, and good. Yeah, that, I know so Steve, that, Dakota, and Craig, Jared, those guys really well. Great company. Yeah, no, they were fantastic. Um, Craig and Steve, just fantastic guys. And then, um, so the, that was back in 2008. Pretty much after we wrapped up that warehouse, that Am that big Amazon distribution center, that's kind of when the economy went south, and I kept having to go to California to stay busy. Ah, and it was like, well, <laughs> so I wound up just moving to California, and I found in it. That's when I found Integrated Security Technologies. Uh, so that was in. Yeah, late 2008, and still with, they're still putting up with me, so, you know. Yeah, or uh, Convergent, you mean, yeah. Or, yes, Convergent. Yeah, Convergent, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that, that's a good career path, though, because starting sort of small here, we had some good-sized projects here, but I can't imagine. So, a distribution warehouse about a decade ago, what, uh, was, what was going in there? Was it, was it full-blown access? Was it all integrated, a big integrated system? Like, to the, did Amazon have an enterprise at that point? As much as you can say, I guess you can't uh, share too much about a, about their security, but online no, anyway. No, it it was an enterprise system. Uh, I didn't really get involved much with the front end of it. I, see. I was just installing the hardware out in the field. Oh, uh, gotcha. 
and they had a guy out of Seattle that kind of uh, brought it into their, you know, into their enterprise system. Uh, don't remember his name, but we did we did work together for quite a while. About four, it took about four months. Wow! And it was this was a six hundred at the time a six hundred uh, thousand square foot warehouse and. And they were just in a small little corner of it. They weren't even occupying the whole thing. But now I understand that they they, they occupy the whole thing. You know, Amazon just kind of exploded. So well, I think they've taken over the world, right? Don't we have? They got? Don't they have like <laughs> blimps and drones? And I mean, I don't. I can't imagine like the security of their environment yeah. now. I have to get somebody on. I used to know a guy there. I think he's there, but I'm not sure if he does physical anymore jocks um i think it was last i want to get him on maybe we can talk about that they the enterprise guys don't like to talk a lot about you know their their uh what do you call right. it their uh serve their threat surface you know so they they share a little it's kind of like dod they'll tell you a little bit but not anything useful you know yeah so, i guess i don't want to say too much about it but um <laughs> so you got out to the west coast and you got back into uh, again, are you so you into enterprise space? Is it SMB? What kind of uh, what's going on on the West Coast? You know. So, so what I've been doing is mostly working on college campuses. Wow. And okay. So we're, we're doing we're doing uh, a lot of airport security as well. Ah. But uh, but on the college campus, so I I spend I've been spending uh, most of my time at a, at a at USC, where they've got just a lot of camera, a lot of cameras, and a lot of it's a wireless. Um, so we, I don't know if you're familiar with FireTide at all. Yeah, yeah. But okay, so we we kind of started off with that, and um, we're putting a bunch of cameras on this these this huge FireTide mesh network, wow. and of course that's all five and six gigahertz. Uh, 802.11 technology so it has its limitations yeah for bandwidth yeah I was, uh, I was, that's interesting it um can you share with us what is it so when you have a mesh um and we're, we're trying to deploy on a mesh are we there's got to be uh my guess aggregation points on the mesh right so is that where you get start to get throughput struggles or is it truly out even at the endpoints as well like i think you could bring it in it's just when you start aggregating a bunch of video at once you know you're going to have some um uh you know some some well, tight tight points <laughs> right well it's kind of both because um ah. so out in the field the, the struggle is okay so all these um all these fire tide uh antennas are out there and they're using the same 802.11 channels that everybody else is using yeah for their uh wi-fi at home and so every once in a while you get degraded video you go out there and, and and you have to do a spectrum analysis and then you find out that oh that this channel is saturated because wow. you know somebody somebody went to best buy and got a wi-fi router and just plugged it in and now all of a sudden your video doesn't work Interesting. but uh so so that has been an issue uh but now we're moving to a different technology and the uh, 60 and 70 gigahertz or 60 and 70 gigahertz range with a different product called Cyclu. Yep. Um, and it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like game changer. It's like wireless game changer, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh it, it seems to me it's interesting because, you know, the uh, fire tight stuff and, and a lot of that that equipment and that frequency spectrum, it's supposed to hop around and it's supposed to work. Right. Um, but you get like you said, you'll get someone inexperienced who won't uh, have had turn on that frequency agility. Right. So they'll lock on channel six. And if other people are on channels, they don't right. even realize that they're not getting the throughput they are because they're having the same struggle you're having. Right. When they're competing for that bandwidth. Right. And they don't know because right. so you can't, it's just it's ridiculous. <laughs> We used uh, we had a lot of success with Cyclu as well at the uh, you know the Aloha okay. Stadium you know the we had some some oh. elevators and some places we we needed to get we had to go wireless and the Cyclu worked really well. Oh okay okay yeah so you you know what I'm talking about then 
Well, and I don't know. I don't um, know. I can't imagine a, a wireless campus. I'd be. I'd probably run from that project just because uh, I'd be scared. But you know, it's a. Uh, but you're the Jedi, so you could probably deal with it. <laughs> Sometimes I struggle with the force, though. You know, so it's a struggle for. for don't we all? So. Don't we all? <laughs> yeah. So, Talk, can you give us an idea of what, um, you know, with some of these newer technologies, wh what are you able to accomplish? A lot of the cameras are super high megapixels today, five megapixels. Like I imagine outdoor, you may have some eights or tens or twelves or whatever. So what, um, is there a trade-off there where you have to, you know, uh, maybe scale down back some of the frame rates to, to, to make everything work together? Are you, are you achieving what you need to achieve with, uh, in that, in that uh, frequency? Yeah, so, you know, that's a, Good question. So a lot of it, a lot of it depends on the environment that you're in. Yeah. And, and it depends on the equipment that you're using because uh, we're doing a lot of uh, license plate recognition as well. Uh, sure. So if we have a, if we have a mesh that's set up and just doing license plate recognition, well, that's just transmitting kilobits per yeah. second. So Data. if we have, yeah. So if we have a really, um, you know, bad connection, usually it, it doesn't matter too much if it's just license plate cameras. But then when it comes to the, uh, yeah, you get a bunch of access PTZs on the same network and, and now all of a sudden you need uh, 50, 60 megabits per second or, or uh, 50, or I should say 50, 60 gigabits per second, then, man, you really got some challenges. So you got to, you know, go around trees. Um, mm. The thing about the Siklu stuff, it has to be line of sight. Uh, with the fire tide stuff, it'll barrel through a tree, but maybe not as efficient, you know. Um, and, and RF is kind of a, a neat technology, you know, when you when you start uh, messing with it, you realize you can actually bounce signals off of buildings <laughs> to get where you need to go. Yeah, um, you can bounce it off of a parking lot, um, so or different structures or whatever. So, yeah, it, you you really just got to kind of get in there and and sort of feel your way around it. Wow. Um, so to to make it work the way you want to. Well, especially in a campus where you've got such a, you know, a broad USC is a big campus. I mean, I've been up there. Do you, um, when you said, you know, you're using the spectrum analyzer, is this, um, do you have a, also a, a directional antenna that you're using or do you have to, or do you have to use kind of different types of antennas to see what's going on in your environment? No. Now, when I, when we do a spectrum analysis with FireTide, it just has a built-in uh, functionality uh, in the in the radios themselves, so we just do it through the fire. You use theirs. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Um, now you know, as you know, you can. There's apps you can download and put on your phone, and, and I mean, the range on it is not that great, but you can kind of do a, a spectrum analysis just in your immediate area, just on your phone. Yeah. And, and kind of see what's what's being used and where you can you know so if you're having bad wi-fi at home you can download an app and do a spectrum analysis like you were saying a lot of people don't realize they can do that they yeah. just go man why why is my internet not working yeah they yeah the router <laughs> so <laughs> well not everybody's a technical jedi um we're gonna take a break we got rob van huss here he's walking us through some real industry issues out there uh we got to pay some bills rob will be back in about one minute hang on Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stan the Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life, 
and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. And we're back to Think Tech Hawaii Studios live today on Security Matters Hawaii. We got Rob Van Hus, technical jet out of Convergent Technologies in California. Rob, welcome back. Uh, we, were, we, you, were, we were cruising through some RF issues, which I know I've, I've seen my guys chomping on their, their nails and doing these spectrum analysis. And, you know, the thing about that environment is it changes, right? You can get out there one day and everything's fine. And the next day someone's introduced something that interferes with what you were doing, right? So you got to work around it. Right. That's the customers. Do they understand that? Yeah, a little bit. They, they take your explanation, but you got to fix it. Then, of course, the next day, somebody else lights something up, right? And so it, um, it right. can be a cat and mouse game out there. Um, are you seeing a, a wireless, uh, any, any access control wireless? You know, there's a lot of wireless doors and stuff like that. Are, are colleges moving to some of that? I know they've been playing with different types of credentials and mobile credentials and a lot of that kind of stuff as well. So I'm not sure what's going on at uh, some of the campuses you have there in Cali. <laughs> yes, in fact, um, so we are doing some, some Schlage wireless oh. on a lot, of the a lot of the classrooms. And uh, that's actually been in place for a while. Okay. And um, it's, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, the, the AD 400 locks and yeah, the PIM 400 those. locks. Yeah, so, yeah, we do, we do a lot of those. But they have their own in-house lock shop, and oh. they, they, have, they pretty much keep up with that, um, I would say, for the most part. Um, yeah. If they, if they get overwhelmed or if they just get swamped with work, then they, they might call us to come and look at something. But for the most part, they keep up with it. And um, also with uh, some of the aerospace, like Boeing's. Oh, yeah. Um, Lockheed Martin, I believe they have wireless readers at the guard shacks ah. just so that they can walk around and and get somebody's credentials without them having to get out of the vehicle or whatever. Oh, like a like a handheld reader. Not, yeah. Right. Gotcha. Not too much of that going on, but a little bit. Yeah. I don't mess with it a whole lot to be honest with you. It's interesting how the um the campuses, you know, set up their own shop. You know, we're seeing a lot of uh because because like the AD four hundred specifically, you know, a nice, very old, excellent, you know, piece of hardware that's been retooled with some electronics right. in it now. Um and, yeah. and realistically, almost anyone can install it. It's super easy to, to, to get onto a door, um, super easy to use. And then on the programming side, it sounds like they've, they've got some guys there that can handle. Uh, that's usually where we see a lot of deployments. Um, and I don't know if you see this where the, like the door, uh, not the architect, but the, the door hardware provider will maybe drop all that hardware in, but they're, they're not technical. They can't online it or configure it. Um, so there's some, there's been a changing in our industry for, um, like what you call traditional locksmith type guys doing that kind of door hardware work. Do you see that there? Does it seem like the integrators handling the, the deployment as well? Or what do you think? Some, is it some of each? It is, it is some of each. Okay. Um, a lot of times, yeah, it'll, it'll just kind of, um, it comes in waves. I mean, <laughs> we, we, we might do a whole bunch of, we might do a building with a whole bunch of wireless locks. Um, uh, for a, for a particular site, but then we might not touch it again for a while. And, and typically, after we hand it over to the customer, they they they've got some pretty smart guys. Yeah. So they uh, yeah they don't call us too much. That's on, good. on that stuff. Yeah, it's fun. I think I, more I, just when, when they don't want to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy working with the IT teams at these companies. I mean, it's there's been a we talked about it for years. This convergence, and I think it's come you know to to uh, the four in our industry, at least. I mean, if we get a project engaged and only facilities is there and IT is not there, we just like to say, wait, 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 stop. Where's your IT team? Because we're going to need them, you know. And there's right. there's a lot less resistance to that. I think it was a money money game before. Like facilities wanted the money and IT wanted the money, and now they just agree they need to work together. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a course a big part of you know what we're doing and it's more and more just uh, dealing with IT and in fact with um, 
at Convergent, I mean, we have our, we have IT field technicians now, but that's something we didn't see ah. four, five years ago. And yeah, now we yeah. have, you know, um, guys that are, you know, uh, Cisco certified guys out in the field working with IT departments that we need to interface our equipment with. So pretty interesting. Uh, and it's, and it's great because, uh, it gives service techs and installation techs, someone from our company that we can go to without having to rely on their IT. And you know how IT guys are, they're going to blow you off as much <laughs> as they can. So now we got something, somebody with a convergent, uh, business card. That's an IT technician. So they can't yeah. escape nearly as easy. Yeah, I can't imagine on the um, service side, it's always like, um, this IP address is in use and the IT guy from the company's like, no, it's not. I'm like, yes, it is. You have an IP conflict. This one you gave me is in use. Go check your network. No, it's not. You know, like that I, I've been down that exact road with you. I know it's, and it's great to have, yeah. have some help and also have, I think, um, you know, I don't know if you've seen this. It sounds like you have where you've got some of your engineering team that's got credentials on their network to, to look at some things or to do some things on your customer's network. So that's a, a piece of, you know, we VPN into some of the networks and things like that because it allows us to fix some things right. and test some things. I'd wait for days on a customer to get me an answer about something probably if I had to wait for their IT department because they're all busy. Right. And, you know, in that way, I've been really fortunate. Uh, a lot, of, in, in fact, a lot of our service guys, you know, uh, with the VPN access at different places, there's, I don't want to say this, well, there's some days we could probably sit at home and, and, and get a lot done. You <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Except, except with three kids, uh, I can't do it. I have, <laughs> usually if I have an opportunity to work remotely, I wind up going to the office anyway, because there's just too many distractions at my house. Can't get yeah, the work have, done at home. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So, so, well, at least you're honest about uh, it. That's a, uh, some of the remote workforce isn't as forthcoming as you are. And they would like to say they're home. I think they get their work done, but I just think it takes them, they actually work longer. It takes them 14 hours to get eight hours of work done because of the other things they got going on in the home, you know? Working from home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, but uh, yeah, so, and, and so just to work with a lot of the uh, systems um, on a lot of our sites, we, we have to have remote access. And a lot of our, our customers are just, they're, they're more than happy to give it to us if we really need it, you know? Because they know it, it keeps their costs lower too. Yeah. So Let, let's touch on a little bit of uh, uh, since we're there. Let's talk. Um, so you get you know you got a VPN. They've got some identification for you. Um, are they providing you a laptop? Just from a cybersecurity perspective, um, how are you authenticating? Does it YubiKey? You got a multi-factor authentication? Um, are you seeing some of each? Like, do you want remote access to a guy who doesn't you know have have good uh, uh, IDAM policies or something? I don't know. Yeah, you know, um, it it seems to me, you know, there was a site um, that insisted that we use their laptop a, a couple of years ago, and, it, and I really can't even remember who it was. But uh, for the most part, though, I just use my own laptop, and we just have... Uh, Two-factor authentication. Yeah, on your tunnel provided by the by, on, on the provided from the customer. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, I know who that was. At first, it was um, it was it was one of the airlines, Alaska Airlines, I believe. Ah. But then they finally uh, said, "Okay, yeah, you can use your laptop. Just we're going to do two-factor authentication." So it worked pretty well. Yeah, and then um, they they maybe do some scans against it or run run some services against it. Typically, your ports are locked down. You're on a segregated network. I mean, there's, but the risk is there. You know, there's always that that risk of you know a service provider bringing a problem into your network. And when you know we've been through that is with with our industry as well as others. Um, so, right. sounds like the the what's your feeling about the the college campus security? I mean, you know, we've got this age of um, these um, you know hostile you know events and and you know active shooter and all this kind of stuff. You. Um, do you see the campuses investing pretty heavily in security? The students, 
Um, what's your what's your feeling a little bit about lockdown and some of that stuff? I know you're a shooter. I'm a shooter. Um, what do you what do you think about the the kind of the state of of the security culture on campuses? Yeah, you know, um, we we've had a couple of events where uh, yeah. we've had a active shooter, and it, fortunately, it wasn't while <laughs> while I was here. Yeah, or it it wasn't while I was present. I was somewhere around, but I just wasn't physically here at that time. And, um, um, you know, not really a whole lot has been done except for just, you know, more cameras. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have any, any shooter, any gunshot detection systems that, um, that I'm aware of. Now LAPD may, might have their own. Sure. They, in fact, that I know they probably do, but um, you know, most of the issues that that we face is just like out in the field, around campus. Even as you know, we've had we've had hostile people come up to us, and oh, wow. while we're start installing cameras, you wow. know, they know what we're doing, and uh, yeah, we we've never. We had a, now this didn't happen over here, but I think in Carson, we had a guy that actually had a gun pulled on him. And um, yeah, that we, we demanded that they provide us um, with uh, an armed escort ever since then. I, I think they, they accommodate <laughs> us there. Yeah, it's, but, it's, kind of an, it's kind of an OSHA requirement to provide your employee with a safe working environment, right? So he's got to do installation. <laughs> unfortunately right that's crazy right well we're coming to the end i tell you i got about 20 seconds left if you want to give us a last minute plug for convergent or for uh the industry uh final thoughts yeah uh, you know i just um just again want to you know shout out to integrated security technologies fantastic wow, company and i would not be where i'm at today with with convergent if not for you guys wow and um thank you so it's it's been a, a fantastic um tra transition you know just a journey with the security company um in the security industry so it's just been um you guys were are awesome you always be like family and right um uh, Convergence has been a, a fantastic company to grow with as well. Awesome. So. Well, thanks, Rob. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining yeah. us today. Aloha to everybody. We'll see you next. I don't think I'm here next week. I think I'm on the road, but I'll be back soon enough. Take care. Be safe. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you.